and gentlemen and all the Vanderbilt Sangha, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here. I'm going to talk about health and sanitations in working with nuns. Going to Stuart Board, they are in the academic paper that you can reach through the organization of this conference. It will be very nice if you're interested in reading it. But I'm just going to do a practical presentation about the issue. So thank you so much for your kindness. So this is our project. It starts in September. So I saw many uh, difference between uh, treatment with nuns and monks. So I decided to begin to visit nuns and nunneries and see how their health was. That's why this project honestly started. His name is Naljorma. Naljorma in Tibetan means yogini. And you can visit our website to know what we are going, what we are working on, and uh, all issues that we already been doing uh, by fundraising for nuns to sponsor nuns. So. Inadequate access to sanitation and hygiene and this notion affects poor women, girls and nuns. These affected groups are often facing with conditions that are not only serious adverse for health, with negative health outcomes. To ignore their natural female bodily functions causes the risks of being affected by serious health problems such as urinary tract infections, gynecologist diseases, chronic constipation and mental stress, with additional serious challenges related to menstrual hygiene and other related health issues. This is was what we have studied uh, with doctors and what we have found in nunneries in Nepal, especially in Nepal. In Dharamsala, I wasn't able to visit many nunneries there uh, because I also haven't have much time there to do that. Um, but in Nepal, yes, we have been visiting many nunneries. So, rational and objectives about this issue. Advances in female daily use healthcare items are fundamental in having brought wide sweeping changes to the lives of millions of women around this world. Immediate resolution and action should be applied to those matters. The aim of these desired changes are not to dilute any dharma elements, but to apply the wisdom held in modern healthcare practices. These issues around the treatment of female monastics show changes in the question of poverty of ordination and looking at many situations of health and sanitation as well as poverty. One person in three lacks access to adequate sanitation. And this is just in front of our eyes, we just pretend we don't see. A United Nations report on sanitation mentions that the lack of access results is widespread death and disease. Since our project is starting to do some work among women and Buddhist nuns in Nepal, an overview of conditions of Nepalese women is necessary here. Nepal. In Nepal, women and girls are disproportionately affected by the lack of access to safe water, sanitation and hygiene. There is a great need to improve the quality of life within such communities. And these problems obviously constitute a major threat to the health of the people in the community as well as the surrounding environment because all is interdependent. One of the most serious problems faced by local communities in Nepal is the lack of awareness among wider community members regarding health and sanitation requirements. And we are talking about basic things here. Some of the communities do not have toilet facilities in their houses and as such they use open spaces nearby for defection. Our project. I will present. Nadjurma project intends to address this aspect of email sangha live so that the dharmic practice do not suffer due to poor health and sanitation. The most common health problems we have found in the nunneries we have been visiting were gastritis and digestion, stomach pain, urinary infections and gynecology problems, arthritic, tight joint pain, eye blood pressure, 
eye problems, reading glasses needed for those over 40 years old nuns, cataracts among older people, headaches and diarrhea. The most serious health problems were related to lack of medicines, proper sanitation and information education in female ITU. So our work, practical work, because we could not only talk, we should go to the fields and work with the nuns, live with them and feel with them. We should put our heart in our work. So we did it. This is in part B, Kiabat Chatral Rinpanchei Gopa. This is Saraswati Lama, his daughter, and our team. So here is the room they prepare in the Gompa so we can give uh, to health check up to the nuns and do our job. Check up means feeling their pulse. We do examination through blood pressure, diabetes, urine analysis. So here we were, this place is not only nuns, also yoginis, female practitioners not only nuns, because we are talking about female energy, we are talking about women. So this is the right place, because this has got nuns and yoginis, also monks and yogis. Here we are distributing Tibetan medicines, for example, to a yogini, and there, another lady, we are doing a pulse examination. This was the conditions we found in the bathrooms. In in Nepal, we do the lecture about female hygiene and menstruation. Here are the photos. Lecture to most of people, young nuns, and there was a Geshe Ma, I think she's here. I don't know, I don't have sure, but I think one of Geshe Ma that was present in the lecture world is here. And we did a PowerPoint slide uh, based on medical things, because one of the things I've noticed is that Buddhism is far away from medicine, and this is not the way. This is not the point, because yesterday, Solina in his speech, he was talking about mental hygiene. That is really interesting. How can you have mental hygiene if you don't have physical hygiene? You should start with your body, because it's the basic, it's the vehicle to start to understand the body and why these nuns repress their female aspects, their female body, because this is very controversial subject. I don't want members of the Sangha to interpret that I'm here to provoke or something. No, no. Uh, the question is not to enter in competition, but cooperation. This is very important, the projector. <laughs> and we did a medical presentation about menstruation and their effects and importance in a female human body. And it was amazing, because most of the human, the young nuns, they didn't know what menstruation was for. This is really amazing in the 21st century. If you want to go further, you have to educate. How can a female don't know what's the purpose of menstruation? This is life we are talking about. Buddhism means all life in everything. The main purpose of Buddhism is human life. So, we are talking here about human life. And uh, the problem is that we have consequence of unhealthy menstrual practice, because this is taboo issue in Nepal and in India. So, the problem is that if you are not aware of menstrual and the cycle and what you have to do and how you have to deal with that, you don't know the, cons the consequence of unhealthy menstrual practice and what that can do to your body. So, a study has found that the hygiene-related practice of women during menstruation are considered important because it can increase vulnerability to reproductive tract infections. And this is a big point. I can't hide. Uh, in Nepal, we have many nuns with uh, ovarian cancer. Almost nobody found raised nuns. So do they they don't have money to the surgery. So it's a very complicated situation. And many of this, we can say, poor menstrual hygiene can cause fungal infections, like candida, very important organs to energy, to subtle anatomy. 
urinary tract infection, which might lead to cervical cancer. This is a really important issue. We should really meditate and put our heart in this, because many nuns are suffering a lot. In silence, you should not suffer, especially in silence. You should not have to be ashamed to be female. You have to be proud because you generate life. This is my main point, and I ask reflection for that. We need some kind of politic work here. By doing some kind of protocols and uh, cooperation between even all the sanghas, appropriate water and sanitation facilities for women and girls are another gap, and are probably even more important. A consolidated program of extensive review and repair of female monastic facilities must be a priority to get to the root of a very serious, life-threatening cycle of sanitation and health poverty. So, another nunnery that we have been working with in Nepal, Hagen Monastery, is now they are in shelter. Okay, this was just for you to recognize the nunnery, but now they are in shelter because of the earthquake. So, we did the same as we did in Chantra Rinpoche Gopal, check up and offering medicines to nuns. And all this we have done in nine days. Here you see the Dr. Kunza doing examinations and giving medicines, and then our team, me and Dr. Kunza, because this is only medical and, and very, very special place. People are amazingly kind but with lots of urinary infections also. So what we have done already, and we ask fundraising through Facebook. One minute, okay. So this was the beginning of the rebuilding of bathrooms in Chateau Rinpoche Gompa. This we almost finished, and especially with water conditions. This was the most important because most of the urinary tract infections come because of the bathrooms. So, what's the first thing? We decide to ask for fundraising and do that. And monthly offering medicines and checkup, free checkup. In this case, Dr. Kyrgyzstan goes there to these nunneries and she does checkup to the nuns and provides all the necessary medicines. If one doesn't have a healthy, this is my questions, I will leave here my questions and request to the Vembel Sangha to meditate and think upon this. If one doesn't have a healthy physical body with hygiene and proper sanitation, how one would, would social body react to it? How is it possible for nuns and females to have an effective presence in Vajrayana because their health is not well? How their wings and their subtle body is going to work if the physical body is not well? This is my question. How are their wings and channels going to move in right places at the right time when they have gynecology problems? And here we have a deep and powerful connection with the importance of health and sanitation for the effectiveness of practice according to Tantrayana. Is there a cost-effective way to address the health concern of nuns in the Ivalian belt? This is my question. We need to also, women in Buddhism only need to also to engage in causes, engage in things, not only blah blah, engage and ask also to high lamas to talk about women in Buddhism. This is very important, I'm talking about education about hygiene and female anatomic specificities because female body is very different from male body. We have to understand, realize this, and deal with this directly, not pretend we don't see this. So, introduction of yoga in nunneries is what I have already said. I'm asking the Sangha to consider these points. This is our team, Dr. Kunsan, Anika, that is filmmaker, and Brigida, that is a specialist in human rights and law, and that's me. Thank you, may all be well and happy, doesn't matter if it is male or female. And now I'm safe. Thank you, Tommy.